Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Nat Me back with another video to make your anatomy life a piece of cake. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Today we're talking about the nose with all the boundaries of the nose, especially the septum of the nose and the lateral wall of it. So guys, without further ado, let's get started. Continue watching because I've got some really cool tricks up my sleeve to make this topic very easy for you. Let's begin by talking about what exactly the nose is, what its function is and what the external nose is. Basically, your nose is playing a chief role in your respiration. The second role it plays is for smelling things, right? Within your nose, you have smell receptors that allow you to smell. Second thing, it allows air passage. It cleans your air, takes the dust particles out of it and then conditions it in a way that it becomes moist and a good temperature so that it can go into the lungs. So that is the basic function of the nose. Let's talk about what its structure is. The, nose, the part of the nose that you can literally see is the external nose. It has a root from where it originates. Then it has this dorsum, which is the bridge of the nose. And then it has this apex pointy part. After that, it has these nares, anterior nares, right, where you can inhale the air from. Between the nares is this area you can actually see in yourself is this columella area. And finally, you can also feel the nasal septum, which is this cartilage that is separating your nasal cavity into two, right? These are the ex parts of the external nose. Let's move on and talk about the nasal cavity, what lies within the nose. Let's get to the nitty gritty details of the nose and this is going to start with the nasal cavity. Why? Because nasal cavity is exactly what we're supposed to study today. It basically contains everything we need to know, all the important MCQs and exam questions to so continue watching. The nasal cavity is basically divided into right and left halves by means of this median septum. This is known as the septum of the nose or nasal septum. All right, you remember that thing that usually gets deviated to a side in some individuals which leads to need of surgery in them that is that nasal septum that gets deviated the condition is called the deviated nasal septum and guess what today you're going to know more about it Let's talk about uh, what your nasal cavity is made of basically it's divided into right and left halves now if you take the right half and look at it it's basically consisting of these boundaries it goes like roof floor meteor wall and lateral wall makes a lot of sense that's a basic boundary for everything right so what we're going to be talking about first is the roof of that entire nasal cavity so the roof of the nasal cavity is formed by which bones basically the roof has an anterior slope and then it has a middle part and then it has this posterior slope so if you take a look at this picture over here, this image, you can see that the roof has this anterior slope, this middle part, and then this posterior slope. The anterior slope you can see is formed by the nasal bone of your skull. Some part of it is being constituted by the nasal part of your frontal bone. Frontal bone is the forehead bone, right? And then we go below, there is the septal cartilage, all right? We're talking about the roof of this entire nasal cavity. And then we have this middle part of the nasal cavity formed by the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. That uh, area that we studied in the cranial cavity with the holes, right? That allows the olfactory nerve rootlets to enter the nose. The posterior slope is formed by this bone right here. This is the sphenoid bone of the skull. Its inferior surface is forming the posterior slope of the root. Let's talk about the floor. If we look at the floor over here, there's two bones. Firstly, we all know upper jaw is the maxilla. So maxilla is sending this process towards the palatine bone. Therefore, it is known as the palatine process of the maxilla and posteriorly it, the plate of the palatine bone is going to form the floor of the uh, nasal cavity. With that, let's begin the discussion of the medial wall of the nasal cavity. What is the medial wall of the nasal cavity? It's actually the nasal septum in other words. So nasal septum is important because it has this area which is so much prone to bleeding and that area, if you want to know about it, we need to study the nasal septum first. I'm sorry. The nasal septum, I've already told you, is this uh, median osseocartilaginous part that separates your nasal cavity into two halves. So guys, always, I'm sorry to say, but like you have to learn the definition of everything, right? And this is how you have to learn median osseocartilaginous part. So now you know that by definition what, what the nasal septum is. Uh, let's talk about what exactly is this nasal septum formed from. Since it's osseocartilaginous, which means that it is formed partly by bone, osseo, and partly by cartilage. I tried my best to draw a diagram to show you that this is the upper jaw. So it's, suppose I am looking this way and then you take this part, you take a section of my head and then you view it like that. This is what you will see. Bony part consists of these bones. If you remember above was the 
ethmoid bone, right? So this plate that is projecting from the ethmoid bone is known as the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Then we have this bone. This bone is known as the vomer bone. The cartilaginous part is formed by this huge cartilage known as the septal cartilage. Obviously, that's going to be the name, right? And you can see this tiny cart. There's a septal process of the inferior nasal cartilage. Now, the anterior most part of the nasal septum right here, it is known as the cuticular part. It is the most tiniest part. It's the part you can actually see. You have the fibro fatty tissue covered by skin and you have that area. You call it the columella. It is basically the lower margin of that septum. Now, let's talk about a very important example question the arterial supply of the nasal septum now guys what I want you to do is divide the entire nasal septum into four areas one that is lies anteriorly and superiorly so entero superior quadrant then anterior inferiorly entero inferior quadrant postero superior quadrant and postero inferior quadrant next what I want you to do is remember this mnemonic that goes like slay GPS what you're gonna do is going from below upwards then below upwards write down that mnemonic so S L A E G P S. All right. Now you know almost fifty percent of the arterial supply. Let's talk about what these mnemonics actually stand for. So first is S L. The septal branch of the superior labial labial artery supplies the antero inferior quadrant of your nasal septum. Now remember one thing. The antero inferior quadrant of the nasal septum is also known as the vestibule of the nasal septum and it is known as superior labial because we all know the lips lie over here and we know anything superior to the lips is going to be superior labial so the septal branch of superior label in the antero inferior quadrant in the antero superior quadrant we have ae this is the anterior ethmoidal arteries septal branch which will once again go over here in the antero superior quadrant then we go for the GP. This is on the postro inferior quadrant. The GP goes for the greater palatine artery. It gives a branch in the postro inferior quadrant. And finally, the S goes for the postro superior quadrant's arterial supply with the most important artery of this nasal septum, sphenopalatine artery. The sphenopalatine artery is the main artery of this septum. Now that we have this blood supply, I want you to know about this very important area that lies in the vestibule of the nasal septum. Should I repeat that? The vestibule. What does that mean? The antero inferior quadrant is actually the vestibule of the nasal septum. Over here, what happens? This specific area, there is an anastomosis taking place between the arteries that we just talked about. So it goes like septal branch of the superior labial, anterior ethmoidal septal branch, the sphenopalatine artery, and then the greater palatine artery. All of these are coming to anastomose and form a network of or a plexus at the vestibule of the nasal septum. This area is known as the Littles area and this plexus is known as the Kesselbach's plexus. Can you remember that? What is the significance of it? Whenever there's a nosebleed, whenever there's epistaxis, which is the more formal term for nosebleed in anatomical terms, the epistaxis occurs, more likely the injury is in the littles area. This is the most prone area to bleed in because it consists of a very rich networks of arteries anastomosing with each other. The sphenopalatine artery is known as the artery of epistaxis. The artery of epistaxis is known as the sphenopalatine artery. The area of epistaxis is known as the littles area. The plexus of epistaxis is known as the Kaiselbach's plexus. Let's talk about the nerve supply of the nasal septum. So I just want you to remember, whenever there is an antero superior part in the nasal septum, nasal cavity, wherever, the antero superior part will always have the word anterior ethmoidal within it. Nerve supply, this is area is supplied by the anterior ethmoidal nerve. And just posteriorly, is supplied by the pterygopalatine ganglions NP branch. No problem. It is the nasopalatine branch of the pterygopalatine ganglion. Let's talk about the lymph node supply. Very easy. Anterior part of the nose drains into the submandibular lymph node, whereas posterior part drains into the retropharyngeal and deep cervical lymph nodes. The venous drainage is that the anterior part of this entire septum drains into the facial vein. The posterior part of the septum drains into the pterygoid venous plexus. So that is all we need to know about the septum. Let's talk about the lateral wall now.